Next we'll look at how can we convert from a decimal number in order to get to a binary number. So we've seen by doing expansion we can get uh, from binary to decimal and that was something like we had 1, 0, 1 in binary so we say 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 0 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 0 so that would be how we'd represent 5 but what about if we want to get that number the binary representation from our decimal number well there's two main ways we can do it the first way that we can look at is if we do uh, a division approach and the other way that we can try to do it is by using what I'll call a bin approach. So for the division approach what we're going to do is we'll take an initial number and let's take uh, we'll take a common number that we'll convert with each approach. Let's use 47. So for the division approach we'll take our initial number we divide it by 2 that's going to give us a quotient, so think about 47 divided by 2. I'll use a little bit of space down here. That'll give us 2. There's no remainder, so then 2 divided by 7 is 3. And we have a remainder. We don't want to take it down to a, a fractional or a decimal notation here. So that gives us 23. And then a remainder of 1. Now, when you have your first quotient, copy that quotient down to the next row and we'll have 23 divided by 2 and we can just do that same process so we have 1 oh, there's no remainder there so 2 divided by 3 is 1 we have another remainder so we have 11 remainder 1 we continue doing this until we've gone far enough and I'll show you what that is when we get there. Uh, this would be 5 remainder 1 Just writing down these steps first. So we had 5 remainder 1, that was back to this line. We copy the 5 down, I'm not going to draw the arrows. We got 2, which was our quotient, remainder 1. Copy our 2 over here. So we get 1, remainder 0 and then we copy our quotient down here so I mentioned earlier well when do we how do we know when to stop whenever this our quotient is 0 that's when you stop the binary number that would represent 47 we get by building when once we've hit our stopping point up from the bottom to the top so the binary representation for 47 would look like 1 0 1 and there's four ones left so that would be our binary number. Now if you want to check this to make sure that you got your, your arithmetic correct we can convert that using the initial approach back up here. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I won't have space to do with the table but we can say this is 2 to the 1 sorry 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So we have 32 plus, there's nothing for 16. There is one for 8, 4, 2, 1. And if you add these together, uh, 8 and 2 is a group, that's going to be 10. The other ones don't make a group, unfortunately, but 32 plus 4 is 36, plus 1 is 37. 37 plus 10 is 47. This is a pretty 
uh, pretty algorithmic or routine approach. You could also try instead of doing it as a table here, and if you do this table, try to draw it neatly, it's easier to see. You could also just take your number and keep dividing by two as you go up that way. Uh, and if you have any difficulties with doing the arithmetic in your head quickly like that, uh, this may be an easier format for you. So give either a try. Uh, you'll get the same result either way. Uh, in this case, you wouldn't be because you're building up instead of building down. So your number in this case would have to be built down that way. So try if you try to remember the two approaches, you might get mixed up on if you're going up or down. So pick one and just stick with that. Next we'll look at the bin approach. So the bin approach, we'll actually start by listing out our different powers of two. So we'll start at zero, and we have one, two, and we want to do this until the value that we're putting down, uh, and I'm writing the, not the exponents, but the actual, the values, so this would be two to the two, etc. We want to do this until we get to a number that's bigger than our number in question. 16, 32, and 32 times two is 64. All right, we've got a number that's bigger. We can't uh, use 64, so that starts with the zero. But now we have a number that's smaller than the number, smaller than or equal to the number that we want to convert. So you take your initial number, 47, you subtract the number for this bin in question, and you have a new value. So 7 minus 2 is 5, 4 minus 3 is 15. So we get here, whenever we do this subtraction, so we hit that this is smaller than or equal to that, we place a 1 in that bin. Uh, 16 is going to be too big, so if it's too big we have to put a 0. But 8 is going to be less than 15, so now we can subtract the value for this bin, so we want to flag that. Just put a line there so we can see the table easier. And we get seven. Well, four is going to be less than seven, so we can do the same operation there. Three, two is less than three, so we flag that bin. And oops, one. And we have uh, one is going to be less than or equal to our value there ran out of space, but 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. And uh, we don't actually have to have the 0 there, so this is actually a good teaching point. I got ahead of myself when I started building the table. Because we have nothing left, a 0 at this point, we don't have to go any farther. I started writing the table as values. Sorry, as exponents. But there's no value that we can say 2 to the x and that's going to be equal to 0. So we shouldn't have, I shouldn't have drawn this portion on there. So just ignore that part. So if you want to think about how you write the table, you're effectively doing 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, etc. And then you're using that approach to fit your number into bins as you go across. Uh, notice that your value here is the same as the value that you got by this approach, so there, or the final number. And if you really want to test and get familiar with the two approaches, you can try both approaches and compare your answers. Uh, if you just do the one, you can do the expansion out. I won't repeat it since we've already done it down here uh, to confirm that you got back to your original number. So that's how we can convert between these are unsigned values. Uh, signed values, which means that we could have negative numbers, would be a slightly different approach, uh, but they won't be covered in this video. So if you have any questions on this, take a look at it and post them in the Moodle form or ask them in class.